This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Hmm. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. To stop Orders the came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. Might as well kill yourself. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, <laughs> as though he had been made exactly for this job. All right. And Stanley was happy. Hello there, and welcome to the Stanley Parable. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. It's me. Ooh. Okay, so uh, the narrator just told me I did that, but I'm not doing it. I want to push buttons. Hello? Loving the surveillance in there. Okay. Is that my briefcase? Does it have my packed lunch? Uh, uh, lunch sandwich. Hmm. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. Nonsense to he get never a functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Okay, so I'll try not to talk when the narrator's narrating because we'll miss bits. When uh. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hmm... Uh. What if I didn't? This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley <laughs> knew it perfectly well. Uh. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Did he, though? Did he really? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, <laughs> Stanley decided that he would punish himself. Aww. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Punishing himself? Oh, I'm frightened now. Maybe, maybe, I'd, maybe Stanley <laughs> did go the right way. Shit. Uh, okay. Off we go. It's a very s quiet lift for something that looks as shit as this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, smooth sailing. Open sesame. I don't want to punish myself. Oh god. <gasps> oh god. Ow! It almost perplexed Stanley that he had actually gone and stepped into this metal trap. After all, it should have been no surprise that this thing would lead him to his death. Oh, but shit! He thought to himself, this is simply the price to pay for ruining a perfectly good story. <laughs> so he resigned and willingly accepted his fate, the inevitable end toward which he had spent so long stumbling. Farewell, Stanley. Shit! Well, goodbye. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as he sent his subject down the conveyor belt and into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. <laughs> Fuck. What? 
No, it didn't. What's going on here? It's a shame then that for all his work, it was such a meaningless victory for the narrator. Did he really think he would accomplish anything by murdering this disposable vessel? The fuck is going on here? What the hell is this? What is... Okay. Well, I'm confused. Every possible choice Stanley could make had been designed for him long before he ever set foot here. Okay. The narrator wanted to kill him. Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start. <laughs> I want to jump out of a window now, apparently. There's no salvation for either of these two, I'm afraid. The narrator had as little power over Stanley as Stanley did over the paths that he walked. The end? But listen to me. This story is not over. Oh, good. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, just... Ouch. Whatever I do, don't what? Oh my god. Shall we try again? To the lounge. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge. I did. To check on his co-workers. I'm gonna he check never now. functioned well by himself. I know, I'm such a loser. He needed support and guidance from yes. others. Tell me what to do. Total solitude was terrifying I'm your me. bitch monkey. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, I can't help it. This was not the correct way to the employee I can't lounge, help it. and Stanley knew it perfectly well. But I'll go down here this So way. he turned left at the first open door and walked back in like that right. direction. He was back on track. Cool. Okay. Cool. When Stanley entered the lounge. He was horrified to find not a single person here. He Shit. decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. I would like a sandwich. Oh, what are you designing? <laughs> um. All right, let's go find my boss. That's a sick, twisted hotel. Coming to a staircase, oh. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Did he though? Oh, yeah, he did. All right. Fuck. Too scared. Up I go. Oh. Ooh, he's got a fancy office. Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of Hello? anything in life. It was at this point that he began What's to it? feel dizzy and a little chair. sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's oh. office. Stanley had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, hmm. since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. Ooh. And so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, five, seven. Oh. Thank you. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have... Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad... <laughs> Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. This couldn't be better narrated if it was Stephen Fry. You know, this is awesome. As he drew deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find... 
Oh rows God. And rows of monitors. Screens with a number above it. Oh God. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, mm. his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. Dun, dun, dun. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, oh, oh, revealing the ultimate shit. truth of the situation. Oh, God. What is going on? An enormous control panel Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labeled with emotions. What? Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. Oh, no. And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always oh. at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Oh, Jesus. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. You better believe it. Didn't even notice this thing. I'm so angry right now. Whoa! Half-life ladder action. I'm so angry. I'm gonna come and twist those levers. You better believe it. Here I come. Whoa. The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom. Freedom. The further from enslavement. You motherfuckers are gonna pay. Stanley noticed some fucking twisty knobs. The narrator didn't tell me what to do, but so I'm doing it. I did it. Uh oh. Blackness. Power gone. All alone. And then. Hmm. Freedom! As he stepped through the door into the fresh outside air, a feeling of liberation rushed through Stanley's body. He had seen power. He Arching had seen power. enslavement. I've and seen he enslavement. had destroyed it. Ha ha! The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing. <laughs> nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. Oh shit. But it didn't upset him terribly. Because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. Uh -oh. All he felt was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. No more bosses. No more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. And he stepped out into the world and he felt the cool breeze upon his skin and Stanley himself. was happy. Oh. Alright, hello again. We are having another crack. Let's hurtle. Stanley Why? decided to go to the staff line. I sure did. When Taking Stanley the left door, came to a there's nobody here. Off to the boss. Downstairs we go. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered it. the possibility of facing his boss, of admitting that he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. Mm. And in such a competitive economy, was it really worth taking that risk? All because he believed everyone had disappeared. 
his boss would think he was crazy. <laughs> You're and crazy, then Stanley. Occurred to Stanley. Get the hell back to Maybe, work. Maybe he thought to himself. Maybe I am crazy. Everyone I know simply vanishing out of the blue. There's almost no other explanation for it. And a nagging fear began to creep up in his mind. Questions that had been there all along. He just hadn't put his finger on them yet. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <laughs> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar.、Mm. Was he just walking around in circles? Where am I? He thought. And the more he found himself unable to answer these questions, the more questions continued to arise, until he came to the issue that had been slowly boiling, until he could ignore it no longer. Why is there a voice in my head <laughs> dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Shit! Suddenly. Every door slammed shut. No, Stanley screamed. I need to get out of here. I need to know that there's something out there. I need to know it's not just all in my head. Uh-oh. And he screamed and clutched at his skull as the voice grew <gasps> harsher and the music in the background rose higher and higher. And then, moments before collapsing to the ground, Stanley clenched his fists and screamed to anyone who might be listening, "I'm not real. I'm not real." Don't believe any of it. None、I'm、of it's real. real. These motherfuckers be crazy. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Where? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She got dressed, went to work, clocked in, clocked out, and then she walked home. But her walk on this day was interrupted by the body of a man. Who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. <laughs> Moments after seeing him, she would turn, run to the nearest police station, and call for an ambulance. But for just a few brief seconds, she merely stood there, unable to move. The tragedy was not the death of a single person; it was that she would never know this man's story, never hear in his own words what had happened to him. Or what he believed had happened to him, for to know these things would be to exist inside the head of the man himself. So all she could do was observe from a distance and pity him. But Mariella、so、had places、me. to be and people to meet with, very important people. I got shit to do, fool. Whose impressions of her would affect her career and indeed the rest of her life. I don't want to get my ass fired. She stood there for only a moment, looking down at the body. And then she ran. Poor dead son of a bitch. I'm out of here.、Eh. Heading into the corridor. Taking the、I'm、left door. To Gonna see the boss. To Upstairs. Oh my god, there's nobody、Entering、here. Oh my god, I found this. Oh my god, computer screens. Holy crap! Look at all this business here. Climb in your windows. Okay, here we go. We're back at this machine. I'm gonna pull the green one. Huh? Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? I did. After it kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is、yeah. that what you wanted? Yes. Control, Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. Don't be. <laughs> I applaud your effort. I really、okay. do. But you need to understand.、Ow. There's only so much that machine can do. Can do everything. You were meant to let it go. No. Turn the controls off and leave. No. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do better than that. I will. I'll I'm、go. afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you have. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent. Stanley suddenly realized that he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. Oh shit! In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Oh, let's make it say、um, two minutes. Now, this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? Go ahead, play with those controls all you like. The real controls are where I'm sitting. Ah! Did you really ever believe you held any power? Did you not think I knew what I was doing when I erased your co-workers and turned off the machine? Wait, I was offering you freedom. An escape. 
I didn't have to do that. So, that's my room. I've run this story many times, and I don't always set you free. Sometimes you just sit there, day after day after day, doing your job forever, and then dying alone. Uh. But when I actually give you the freedom to control your own actions, it's not enough. I let you go, and you trapped yourself just the same. You just weren't made to handle this sort of responsibility, I'm afraid. Fuck. But you know what you were made for? Pushing buttons. Yes, I can push buttons. <laughs> you get it now? Oh, I'm enjoying this. Tell you what, I'll throw some extra time on the clock just because I'm having so much fun. Okay, Jeremy. Here we go. You see, I want to watch you for every long second you try to puzzle this out. After all, it should make sense, right? The timer, the nuclear detonation, the mysterious facility, it's all here. This is a video game. Except for one thing there, hero. You've got no weapon, no vehicle. You don't even know where you're going. When you saw that timer, you just instinctively started trying to find an exit, didn't you? No, I've been pushing fact, buttons. I bet you're still looking for a way out. Well. I bet you're clicking on everything in this room, trying to open doors or vents or something and solve the puzzle. Yes. As though this game has a solution, as though it can be won. Can that it be? That timer is not a catalyst to keep things moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. Uh. It's the moment when the hero realizes that despite his best efforts, he is powerless to his environment. And then he lets go. He surrenders. And he dies. Oh. 30 seconds, Stanley. 30 seconds. Until a boom. And then nothing. No ending to this story, just well, you die. I'll go turn everything off then. I suppose you could have gotten an actual ending if you played along, but that just wouldn't have been your style, would it? Well, I've done a few. Instead, You'll perish knowing that the only choice you made here was to turn on that machine and to start this timer. But you won't be alone, because I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here to watch every second of your inevitable life from the time we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. Oh. Uh, uh, mm, fuck. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, thanks for watching the Stanley Parable. That's all I can be bothered doing. If you have any different endings that you've discovered by playing this, let me know. Google the Stanley Parable and you can download it for free. You need Half-Life 2 to play it. And if Half-Life 2 is installed on your Steam account, it will run automatically when you click its icon. It's pretty entertaining. Short value action. Um, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.